You need to beg your pardon. Just shut your mouth, on. Beg your pardon? Fuck yes. you. <laughs> this is episode Absolutely. 194. Oh! 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 Think! What? Yes, Eddie! Oh! Oh, yeah, whoa! Hey. Hey. Huh? What, what, what are you do this week? What have I done this week? Uh, excellent question. So, right off the bat, I would like to say that I got the DLC for Streets of Rage 4. The oh. Mr. X Nightmare. Um, it adds a new survival mode, which sounded like it wasn't going to be all that fun, but it actually really freaking is. So, what it is, is basically... You spawn in a kind of quote unquote side scroller level. It's not really a side scroller because it's just this one. It's basically like a battlefield from Smash Brothers. That's what you get. That's all. Yes. That's all you've got. Uh, sometimes there will be random elements added to it, like uh, wrecking balls or flamethrowers or whatnot. But yeah, you spawn on a different level each time you beat the first initial level, which the first initial level is just completely blank and has like one or two bad guys on it that you punch to death. It's fun. And as you progress, you'll get more interesting scenarios or environments, and you'll get more access to more weapons, which uh, do degrade over time, which is unfortunate. Uh, my computer screen just turned black there because I wasn't using a mouse or anything, so let me turn on a YouTube video in the background so it won't do that again, so I can actually see that I'm actually talking. Yes. Um, train of thought is gone. As you progress through all the levels you actually get power-ups as you go so what i've come to understand is that this is basically a side scroller beat em up that's just also hades in a way oh you've, you've got one life you go through that one life you beat up a lot of people you get a lot of power-ups and then you die and then you start all over again all right the it's, it's, it's a it's a friggin blast honestly that does I, yeah, I had very low expectations because I was like, yeah, survival mode, that doesn't sound quite up my alley for some reason. Yeah, I've played Smash Brothers and th those survival modes are never able to keep my attention span. But because they have you constantly earning new power-ups and acquiring new weapons or being dropped in new environments, it really keeps everything fresh. So and it's so... It, go ahead. Correct me, if, correct me if I'm wrong here. It sounds like a beat em up horde mode. Yes. Ah. That's more or less exactly what it is. All right. Yeah, and it, it's really fun. I wasn't expecting it to be so fun, but I've just sunk a massive amount of time into it. And, you know, it, one life will more or less get me up to 20 minutes of playtime throughout a run. Yes. So. It's been it's been a blast. I wasn't sure how I felt about the DLC. I thought it was kind of well for the price. It's only like seven dollars. For the price, it's not terrible at all. I was hoping for, hoping for a little more. I wanted some extra story mode content, that, but there unfortunately is none. But the survival mode is just such a blast to play through and such a fun time sink that I have no regrets whatsoever. And the, and the new characters are awesome as well. Uh, unfortunately, no more Speedy Boys, and Rue was not a DLC, but there is a way to play as him. If you enter, like, a cheat code or something, I've not done that yet. Yeah, you can't play as, like, Rue in the new art style, just old pixel. Right, right? just the pixel yeah. one from Streets of Rage 3. But every other character's been updated for the new art style, right? Uh, everyone except for Rue and... what's his face? Doctor... something... Doctors, we'll call him Doctor Z because I know his first name starts with the Z. I think he's Doctor Zan. Doctor Zan. Doctor Zan. That sounds right. Yeah, because he, he takes all the Zans. Yeah. And they made the SWAT chick playable, right? Yes. Yes. If I ever play Streets of Rage, I know which character I'm playing. Oh yeah. It's she's. Uh, I forgot what her thing is. I. There's something that she can't... I don't remember if she can't jump, or if she can't... Oh, what is it? It'd be something related to her being a boss character, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
I I think her thing is that she just can't jump, but all her attacks hit super freaking hard. Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And all three characters that got reintroduced or introduced in this DLC, they all have very unique play styles. It's very fun. I think Estelle, who's a SWAT chick, plays a bit too similar similarly to Max, who is a pro wrestler. But they're still variated enough that it's not a big deal, and they still feel very unique in their own ways. So, across the board, I, I love that every character feels different. Even if not too terribly different, different enough to where you don't ever feel completely bogged down. Like, oh man, it, this game is fun, but everyone just feels too samey, and I don't like it. It's like, no, yeah. everyone's got a very unique style going for them. So, that that's what keeps everything about it fresh it doubly so in survival mode because I, I put it in a lot of time with axel throughout survival mode and if i ever get more of that it's like oh hey i'll just swap to this other character put in a lot of time with that and it, it still feels fresh and new so i've i i take my hat off for the development team they seem to know exactly what they were doing and i honestly i hope for more dlc so i can throw more money at them if, if this is the only send-off we get, though, I'm fine with that. It's a very good game. Yeah, that's pretty well the perfect spot you want to be in. It's a satisfying end, but at the same time, if there's more content, it's like, yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> if there's more, yeah, I, I will throw my wallet at you. If this is the end, it, it's a good ending for me. I'm completely content. Need to, um, need to unlock Rune now, or figure out what the code is to play as Rue. All right. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Um, yesterday, I was forced to watch an episode of the Looney Tunes show. Which what one? Is the Which more one? modern recent one. But do you, Which do you mean, one? Yeah, do you, do you mean I the one that's... I don't know. I honestly don't know. There's the is old... it the Seinfeld-styled one? Maybe. I don't know. What is Seinfeld? Okay, yes. do Bugs and Daffy just live in a house in the suburbs? Yeah, and yeah that's, the one, that's the one. Okay, I like that one. Yeah, so the episode they may watch because... And this has been a thing for several years going now where they've always wanted me to watch this one specific episode because all my siblings say I'm a lot like Daffy. And so in this episode that we watched this day, the uh, Daffy plot is that... He has a old blue recliner that is more or less worn down and needs to be thrown out and replaced. And he took a suicide for it. Yeah, he did. Uh, and so Bugs gets rid of his recliner and replaces it with a new one. And Daffy's not content because he wants his old one. So then the episode just becomes a, uh, basically a mission for Bugs to uh, reacquire that old recliner that uh, Daffy is so heartbroken over losing, and then the episode perfectly ends with him finally getting that recliner back, and Daffy looks at it and he's like, hey, hey where's my shiny new one? <laughs> went, through, went through all that trouble, didn't even need to. Yeah, if someone told me I was like Daffy Duck, I'd be like, well, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, obviously I don't live with you, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know, but like, you don't strike me, it's like, you know, the the thing when I think about uh, that sh that shows Daffy, I think about this scene where um him and Bugs are on on the docks, and they're talking about Daffy's forgetfulness, and Daffy just starts uh start Daffy just starts the freaking um saying Bugs's um credit card information from memory, <laughs> and he does it really loud so everyone on the dock can hear it. Ooh. Yeah, like you know, you don't this, this strike me as the as that kind of guy. But then I, I don't know. I don't need to live with you, so. Right. I think I think I'm more devious. I can remember a credit card number without having to say it aloud, and you'll never know I'm using it. Alex, what's your credit card number? Five. Uh, let's see. Uh, hang on. <laughs> Wait, we found my wallet real quick. The funny thing is, my credit card that I've got in my wallet is actually expired, and the new one hasn't came yet. So I could list this off, but I won't, just in case. <laughs> right. It's a dud credit card, but uh, I don't know if it's worth the joke for the risk. Right, right. 
Uh, I don't know if this is still like I something you can be that using. That recently expired, and the one they sent me more or less had the exact same the digits, so I I would not bother with that. No. Uh, well, I, it was actually a whole thing because I had actually uh, I had set up my card expired as we were moving, and I did I procrastinated setting up my bank account to recognize my new address. So they sent the credit card to my old address. So I had to call them up and get the uh, old credit card made, in, the, the new credit card that they sent to the house made into a dud. And we also like set it up where this next credit card I get is not going to use, or, excuse me, debit card. I don't use credit cards because I'm not a fool. This next right. debit card that I uh, use I uh, will have a uh, new number that's entirely different from my old one, specifically because there is probably some guy running around with the supposed new credit card or debit card, which has the old information on it. Yep, yep. Probably the land, the landlord, and I know not to trust him. <laughs> I've never had a good landlord, no. Yeah, ours, ours was a vociferous racist. <laughs> that's even worse. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. He was known for refusing to do like even bother to like let in uh, black people who were looking to buy a house. Like just straight up. Yeah, that's not good at all. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I hope he goes broke. <laughs> a business parent pattern like that, he probably will. Ideally, right. All right. Uh, what else did you have to think about that particular show? Uh, I I thought it was very enjoyable. I thought all the humor was very well done. Uh, I liked all the voice actors. Nobody stuck out as being completely awful. I thought they all did a very splendid job. Uh, yeah, it's it's the hard thing with Looney Tunes is like how do you get someone who can imitate Mel Blanc? So what they do is they just get a different voice for it. Seems like everyone, don't they? Yep, more or less. They're close, but you can you can tell you can tell. Yeah. Uh, not a lot else about it to say, uh, unfortunately, because I only saw that one episode, so I've only got that one episode to go off of. But I I thought all the humor is fantastic. I really liked. I re I like the style the, from the art style to just as, just in general what they were going for. I thought it was all very enjoyable. So I think it gets two thumbs up from me. Yeah. The, the strange thing I think that was the uh, problem that the show likely faced was just the fact that it was using cartoon, like famous cartoon characters who do absurd skits and putting them into a deliberately mundane setting with mundane humor, you know? Right. Yeah, that, that's, like why I, that's why I didn't do it like the first uh, season, I don't think. That's why you didn't like the what? The first season. The first season, ah, yes. And I, I remember disliking the first season for multiple reasons. One of them was just like, you know, it, it's like... I watched a lot, lot of Looney Tunes growing up, so I, I, I was used to the, you know, the, the very cartoonish humor and stuff like that. And also, I just really disliked Lola's character in the first season. And then they, they, they formed her into, more, into a more enjoyable character, so I started enjoying the show overall better, more because I got used to it. Yeah, she's a very big part of it. I think you can tell that part of the thing that the people making that cartoon wanted to do was give her a character that isn't just bunny with tits. Yeah. Wasn't she an athlete? An athlete? She was crazy. Athlete. Was she crazy? Yeah. No, 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 the original, bu uh, not Bugs. Oh, the, the original. original. Uh, no, the, uh, no, the original. Yeah, she's crazy in the show, but in the, in the, what was she in? Space Jam? Yeah. Space Jam, yes. Yeah. So, wasn't she a basketball player in that? I think that was... The yeah, everyone they was. All were. Yeah, everyone was. Yeah, wait a second. How did Bugs learn how to play basketball? When did that happen? Well, it's not that hard. Lola, Lola, Lola taught, taught Bugs how to play basketball, and Lola knew how to play basketball because Lola, Lola was freaking LeBron James, James's secret bunny wife. Kobe was better. The question, the question is not how did Bugs Bunny learn how to play basketball. The question is how did Bugs Bunny learn how to play basketball well enough to keep up with Michael Jordan? <laughs> you know, these are the questions. When, when, uh, oh god, 
What do they expect us to believe? This is some kind of magic b rab huh, rabbit? I hope someone got fired for that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's underselling it. What, 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 what are you expecting of us? To believe that this is some kind of magic humanoid rabbit? Yeah. Um, and what does Homer respond to him with? I don't remember. Something like, Let me ask you a question, sir. If your shirt says genius at work, why are you here at a convention asking questions about a children's cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> And like, despite the fact that that's the most obvious observation of all time, that still manages to shut the guy down. Yeah. Good old Simpsons. Remember when it was good? Yeah. <laughs> the, the answer I've is no. At the time, I've actually watched a lot of videos about people just talking about how the downfall of Simpsons occurred. It's like, I don't even have a dog in the fight, but I find it all interesting. Yeah, it is. It is, it is. Cause like, he doesn't even know what Homer Simpson looks like. Right? I can't tell him apart from Bart. And then there are like, two others as well? Three! Three? Three! Yeah. By God. The... The, 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 the weird part of the Simpsons commu community... Continuity is in like season season eight or whatever Se season seven where, where where they start start having a new neighbors in in the griffin family oh fucking shut up <laughs> the worst part of that joke is that it, it is like just kind of canon and I, I i don't remember how like i don't remember how the it family guy crossover worked because i didn't watch it <laughs> yeah, as far as i care the few drama crossovers are canon the family guy cro crossovers are not what what Homer and freaking Peter did, did the the funny Big Bird fight scene? Aha! Uh -huh. Big Bird, like the Muppet? No, the there's like this oh, there's this, there's this big chicken. Thank that you've not watched Family Guy, have you? No. Oh I don't boy. Watch TV. There's this running <laughs> gag. There's this running running gag in Family Guy where Peter fights with a with a large chicken. He beats his cock and. <laughs> That that some sometimes that's the entire episode. And the the fundamental part of the joke is that Family Guy is ordinarily a very uh, immature comedy for adults with low production values and so on. But the chicken fights are always like extre extremely well choreographed and like crazy big fights where Peter and the chicken fight across the entire city. And there's absolutely no humor to it. It's just two guys beating the absolute fuck out of each other across the line <laughs> of the city. And the joke is that there is no joke. It's just violence. And this joke was funny. This joke was funny for the this joke was funny for the first three times, and then they did it like thirteen more. Yeah. The, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Is like I actually do like that joke where the humor is just too like a serious fight between two absurd people, but it's been overplayed. Man, speaking of overplaying shit, have you guys been paying attention to all this Jeopardy host stuff? No. Haven't they gone like, through like two hosts in a matter of weeks now? Well, for a while it's been guest hosting since uh, Alex Trebek died. But the show's producer, uh, Mike Richardson, who is by far like one... He's one of those guys that you can just see him and smell the shit eating of the grin, right? <laughs> we're talking, he, he looks like, you remember that game they were pushing uh, like two or three years ago on E3, We Happy Few or whatever? Yes. Uh, yeah. He looks like one of those masks that they wear in that game. Yeah. And uh, he uh, announced he was going to be guest host during conveniently the like best season for ratings. And he also, like, gave several of the guest hosts that were known to be the popular contenders, like LeVar Burton and Ken Jennings, he deliberately fucked over. Like, he made, LeVar Burton's guest host week was during Olympics. What? Unbelievable. Yeah. So, and then suddenly, like, uh, about two or three weeks ago, Mike Richardson announced, All right, we have gone through our guest hosts, and we are proud to announce we have ended the search. 
I have gone through a long and arduous process of deciding which guest host is best, and I decided it was me. I am now the host of Jeopardy. Unbelievable. How are they going to deny LeVar? And apparently, this guy has been host like producing lots of game shows, and every time he tries to sabotage the host so he can take over his host, and Jeopardy was the one he was finally able to work on just because Trebek fucking died. And, uh, yeah, immediately everyone was like, what the fuck? Bullshit. But that wouldn't be enough, just saying the guy's not popular. So people dug up an old podcast he did where he just talked about how he thinks that one, uh, one piece swimsuits make women look frumpy. And uh, he also apparently fired women for the crime of getting pregnant. So, yeah, one week they uh, announced he is not going to be the host. He'll just stay on his role as producer. And then the next week, the production company announced they fired him as producer. <laughs> and what I said when I saw that news headline was, talk about overplaying your fucking hand. Yep. The new host of Jeopardy should, should be a vo Vocaloid hologram of Alex Trebek. I mean, that would, you don't understand how much of Jeopardy's audience is made up of seniors that would be scared by that. <laughs> My god, he's a ghost! <laughs> Alex, help me, Alex Trebek is climbing out of the TV. <laughs> uh, like, if, imagine, if during the, imagine if during the freaking, like, the Halloween special, they turn his eyes black, he, he looks directly into the camera, the camera and he just says, seven days. <laughs> seven days. So, here's the thing. There was an episode of X-Files where the villains were two, uh, like, black, uh, black, uh, bad conspiracy agents. Played by Alex Trebek and Jesse Ventura. <laughs> I need to watch that show now. Yeah, that's what I, like, every time I think about that, I'm like, shit, I need to watch that episode just because, like, the idea of those two being partners, you know? <laughs> right. Like, it's, and of course, it's doubly funny because it's Je Jesse fucking Ventura playing a, like, conspiratorial secret agent. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pink, did you do anything else this week? Um, not that I'm aware of. Eddie! Oh, wait, we skipped what we were uploading this week, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Shit! Pink, you putting up anything on your channel this week? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> I've got a lot left over still. Oh, Jesus. All right, I, uh, I, I, I guess conversation yeah. just died. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know what else to add to that, because that's all I've got coming out. You didn't say! You know! I don't need to say. Know. Everyone knows. The oh, shit. Watching this, Everybody know. know. Everybody knows, wants to know what it is, what it is that, that Pink is uploading. So, guess what, guys? Uh, hot news here. Fresh out the press, or whatever. Oh, uh, Dead by Daylight coming out on my channel this week. Oh, oh shit! I can't never believe played it. this before. Definitely wasn't playing this with Mike before the podcast, which is why it was late, but still. I've been waiting all my life to see Pink Sparkle Puff upload Dead by Daylight. My dreams have finally came true. I've decided to bless you all, my children. Do you feel blessed? Dead by Daylight. I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> <laughs> no! This is not what I wanted! You know, I, I I get that he likes this game, but I really want want to watch him play play day day by deadlight instead. <laughs> day by oh. deadlight. It's just you gotta walk around in the dark. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it, it's a life in a life on an on an Antarctica simulator. Ooh. I don't know if I like the sounds of that. Yeah. Uh, hey, is scary, yo. I don't like it. All right. Yeah, Eddie. That's yeah, that's all I've got on my channel. That's all that's going to be coming out 
forever. Oh no. Forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> Addy, what you got coming on the door channel? Nothing. No! I got nothing coming on my channel unless Cathay, the Cathay trailer comes out this coming week, which it may actually. Uh, it's, we're now entering the phase where I could actually upload a video. All right. Oh, boy. And if the satellite does get launched on the 14th and I get internet on presumably the 15th or 16th or 17th, then, yeah, you can expect from there for me to upload. Are those this week? No, that's not this week. I can't do math. Abby! Me. The group channel. So on Monday, we have the best of for Strider coming out. Well, all right. Then on Friday, we have Ratchet and Clank episode seventeen. All right. Where we discuss important topics like whether or not Scooby Doo is a fairy series. No, he's just been blessed by the Dark Gods. Yeah. And then on Saturday, we have the, the fir first uh, par part of the, I guess, new drawing series that we're doing, where we're turning every Mario character into Kingdom Hearts characters. <laughs> this one featuring Waluigi. And that's it. All right. Okay, Eddie. What I forgot. Have you? Yeah, I, I forgot it was my turn. <laughs> I'm, I'm used yeah. to it being pink. <laughs> yeah, I also forgot it was your turn. It took me a second. Like, what's up next? Oh, right. <laughs> Actually, what have you done with your week? Right. Well. Hmm. For video games, what the, what have I done? Oh, I, J James. Yeah, for video games, I started up my second playthrough of Assassin's Creed Odyssey because I've run out of games to play. Oh, oh boy, that that's uh, that's how I know you're really desperate. Yeah. <laughs> but this time I'm playing the game the way it was intended. I'm skipping all of all of the dialogue. I am skipping all of the cutscenes. I am meshing through the, the multiple choice answers, and I'm killing everyone in sight. The way Ubisoft Excellent. intended. Cassandra or Alexios? Alexios. I like, Why? I like Demos better when, when, when it's Cassandra. I think, I think Cassandra's actor did a better job at being Demos. Probably. Yeah, I remember talking about that with Soon once, that for some reason, like, Guys, when they have to voice act characters like that, tend to just phone it in. Like, specifically, I mean, like, the characters that have multiple dialogue choices, like Shepard, right, and Mass Effect, because, like, Sh Male Shepard is by far the worst of the two Shepherds. I wouldn't know. The only dialogue option I've heard, heard in Mass Effect was Will Bang, okay? <laughs> That's the only one that matters. <laughs> I was about to make that same joke. All right, so what have you got to say about the Ass Creed Oz, odd, the odd Ass Creed? Let's see. Well, I think in, 25, in 25 hours, I think I, I've done so far, I, uh, I am in, I am, I don't know, I think near the end of the game, <laughs> like the, the base game anyway. Okay. And this is just through sheer power, power of skipping cutscenes. Because the <laughs> cutscenes cut are that long. Like, 80% of a Assassin's Creed Odyssey is padding in various forms. Oh, cool! Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I've told, told you this before, but um, someone made a post where they modded the game on PC so that the, the never requirements and stuff like, stuff like that doesn't stop them from completing the main story as a string of quests. And... The main story, usually in, in a normal playthrough, takes between somewhere between eighty to one hundred and thirty hours, depending on how how much time you take. And that's like that that's a normal playthrough where you do some some side quests, but not all of them, and stuff like that. If you yes. if you're not forced to do side quests by the game, 
the, the main story of Assassin's Creed Odyssey takes up 20 hours. <laughs> or like 25. Wow. Hey, I should start playing that again. I can probably finish that. No, Pink. Because... The, the actual content, story content is 25 hours, but the game forces you to do side missions to actually be able to not die to the high-level enemies later, so it's, it's actually 80. Oh, well, if the, the side quests are going to put that much time on it, maybe not. And like, that? And like most I was of, like, maybe it'll be double that amount of time, but nearly triple. And like most of the side quests are just like, oh, Mistios, freaking... Akiabares looked at me funny, please kill him, and then you could go and kill Akiabares. Or, or alternatively, you go and fuck Akiabares, because you can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> Assert dominance. Yeah. That's... How many quests have a resolution of either kill or fuck? So a surprisingly or small amount. I have to say? I mean, that... A surprisingly small amount overall, I'd say, but I, I haven't done all of the side quests, and I mean, like, it, it's usually not, not a choice between do, those two, it's usually just like, the, the, okay, there's one mission I, in particular I can point out, there's this one mission where um, an old woman wants you to cut off a bear's dick, so that he can feed it to, to her husband, so that he can, he can have a better re erection. Naturally. And then at, at the end, when, once you get the, the, the bear's balls, the, the husband is there and she, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna to have, have me some tonight. And the hus husband obviously doesn't want any. So he's like, please fuck him instead of me <laughs> or her, whatever, whatever. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's Greece. Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah uh, anyway. So. So then you have the choice of either. I think taking on the woman, woman alone, making it a threesome or just going, no, eat, eat, the, eat the bear balls. I like how it gives you the option to have a threesome. Quality video game design right there. You, you would love Dragon Age. <laughs> I think I have one of the Dragon Ages via the Xbox Gold. Yeah, probably. I, I, think, uh, I think we got Origins or something like that. I believe or, that's the one. Origins is the one where you can have a threesome. All right. Xbox chose well. Man, uh, you started saying Xbox, I thought you were going to do the fucking voice command thing. Xbox launched Dragon Age Origins <laughs> during the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Where did I put my VR helmet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like... I don't know what else, what else I have to say about it, let's be honest, because I've said, I've said most of my pieces. The, the gameplay is still you, boring. You said enough! Yeah, I mean, the gameplay is still boring. I still feel like any, any, any small enjoyment I may get out of the game is easier to attain through many other games. And also, like, I'm, I'm like, like I, I do a mission and I'm like, you know what, I actually kind of had fun. And then I turn around and the game is like, okay, now walk 3,000 kilometers. And I'm like, okay, actually, I guess I didn't have fun. <laughs> <laughs> if I did have fun, I'm not having fun anymore. Yeah. Not to mention the, the focus on naval stuff, which obviously I, I, I'm a big oh, fan yeah. of, as you know. No. Did you, did, you hate the, the, did you hate the naval stuff as much as I did, I think? I was not a fan, and if I try to play it nowadays, I have at this point forgotten the controls of naval battles, so it's just me blundering about, wondering what the heck I'm supposed to be doing. So, they weren't good to begin with, they're even worse if you don't remember what you're doing, so, yeah. no. Wasn't a fan. You know, I, I there, there's like mission when you get to uh, chaos or not chaos. I don't remember which which island it is, it is, but the one with the big pirate woman. Oh, there, there's a what? very good, a large, large pirate pirate lady. Why was I not made aware of this sooner? Well, I was about to say you, you can't leave pink out on this. Do you, do you not remember the large pirate lady? lady? You go and meet her. Uh, I, I've not, I've not encountered her yet, to my knowledge. I would think I would she's, remember that. She's, she's a part of the story. You have to go, go and do missions for her, so her, so you can find your mother. I think when I last left off, I was just murdering a lot of bounty hunters by Spartan kicking them off cliffs. <laughs> which, which missions were you doing around then, or where were you? I don't. It's the first initial one when you get to that one Spartan camp. I want to say. 
I don't know. There's so many sparkling carrots, Pink. You, you, when you first are trying to meet your father, your daddy. Ah, ah, yeah, I'm way past that. I believe it. <laughs> I didn't get very far. I got sidetracked. Yeah, like the the the, the big thing about the Assassin's Creed Odyssey is like the main story is that there's like. Like, you know, it, it spends a hundred hours and there's like four four things that you can even remember about it. Because like the, the fir first the first part is me meeting your daddy, who isn't your real daddy, and then potentially killing him. The second one is Pericles' death. I, 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 there, there's a better way to discern that, but or why that's memorable, but uh, spoilers. Then you find Mirini, and she, she sucks, more or less. <laughs> mm. Sucks what? Yes, it's Greece. With this game, with this game, you gotta <laughs> clarify. With this game, I don't need to clar clarify all of the above. <laughs> and then, then, then there's the ending where you find out that Pythagoras is your daddy, your real daddy. Oh my! Yeah, the, the, the Pythagoras' theorem was inspired by her freaking mother's vagina. Uh, anyway. Uh, I, I, I was going how to move some... on from that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't remember how we got to that. Oh, hey, Addy, you were playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. Do you have any further thoughts on that, or did I interrupt you and derail everything? No, I was. Uh, I'm. I'm trying. I was going to point something out, but I forget what. And it, it wasn't your fault. Uh, or so you say. I, 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 oh yeah, I, I remember. So what, what, where, where I am in the story, you need to go to Sparta and then help Sparta and stuff and then you get exiled later on. But I, ah. I'm, I'm planning, on, before, before they can exile me or after, I, I haven't decided yet completely. But I, I will somehow give Sparta to Athens just because I hate them so much. <laughs> yeah. Athens isn't any better, but they, they, they're my two choices, so I can't really, you know. <laughs> like, on one hand, Spar the Sparta sucks. On the other, Athens is literally, literally the, the main antagonist of the game. So, hey. Why? Well, it's, it's a roundabout way. I, I don't want to spoil things. Okay. But yeah, yeah it sounds like a real uh, a game. Yep. <laughs> but 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 also to escape doing doing because you um in searching for your mother you need to do missions for this big big uh pirate lady, and all of the missions on that island are naval missions. So instead of doing doing do, doing those. I just teleported all over, all over Greece to amass the amount of money she needed, she needed, she needed to tell me where, where the character's mother is. Because I'm not doing wow. naval battles. I, I, instead, instead oh, I use yeah. the powers of teleportation and walking for 30 minutes. That's more enjoyable. <laughs> but yeah, like, Pink, you, you didn't even really see the world. Like, you, you didn't see how, how samey the entire world is. All of Greece looks the same. There's the same, there's the same, same st statue of freaking of Hermes posing in the nude everywhere. All well, those are actual things. But yeah, but was it, was it literally the same statue everywhere, just in different sizes? Probably. Yeah, probably. Hmm. All right. <laughs> you do not understand the obsession they had with Hermes' dick. I suppose not. It's it's kind of a big deal. Uh, it's actually quite small, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> you went right where I was hoping you'd go. Yeah, I was thinking about how, how I can turn turn it that way. Uh, well, I mean, as we all know, only barbarians uh, are packing. Yeah. <laughs> Never have I seen a culture dunk on itself so aggressively. <laughs> look. Look, I mean, real inte intellectuals have that real, real feminine dick. They ain't gay. 
You're gay. <laughs> We're implying that they are. <laughs> that you've, you've effectively summarized Greek culture. Uh, blimey. I mean, I, I don't know, because I feel, I feel like to summar, summarize like ancient Greek culture, culture at least, to summarize ancient Greek culture, I feel like you, you, need, to, you need to do that bit. You also need to somehow in, in, involve pedophilia. Uh, in ancient Greek culture, they were pretty well one of the same. Achilles was kind of an oddball for doing a dude who was actually the same age. Correct, Pink? Correct. Like right, back then, it was mostly just a lot of mentors raping their uh, students. Right. Which, uh, if you look across most of the world's history, it's kind of like, as was the style at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Deadly. Yep. It, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you look over history and it's like, wow, shit doesn't change, does it? <laughs> it's been weird all the time. Yeah. Oh boy. All right. On a less depressing note, does anyone have anything that's a less depressing note? Yes. I I, I guess maybe. So. Uh, th that's mo most of what I did with video games, wise. But I did also draw a couple of couple of things. Oh. Namely, I drew my uh my Halloween avatar, which I will post in a separate thing. So. Y'all can see it, but it won't won't be seen by anyone else. Cause hey, it's a, it's a it's a pepperoni secret. Where did I even put it? <laughs> there it is. It is September. I need to update my icons as well. There you go. <laughs> That's gonna be my avatar for Halloween. Yeah. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let the hate flow through you. Oh. Now, excuse me, I'm going to go get laid and produce the next hero to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, originally, I, I've said this to both of you, I think, before, but originally I was going, going to make my Halloween avatar just freaking me and uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix get up with the... <laughs> With the ca caption of believing a sauce. But oh, then, God, but, I don't I don't even want to acknowledge that movie's existence anymore. But then I then I uh then, then I thought about the pun with this one and I was like, you know what, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh but yeah. I also tried to draw Dan Zaburo from memory. Because I I just felt oh, like no. it, I guess. I mean, Pink, most of the drawings I put up are from memory. Like, 95% oh. of them. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. But there you go. So that, that, that's mm. the first version, but I wasn't satisfied with this one, so I redrew it. Oh, it's in text now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I wasn't satisfied with that one, so I just I changed a couple of things. I think I think the, I think it turned out all right. Yeah, I I like the second one better a lot. I think I would leave the trash can lid placement the same as a previous one though. Yeah, I do like the alcohol on the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's another good touch. <laughs> all right, I, I may make a third third one then, a definitive one out of these two. <laughs> the definitive version. Yeah, I just didn't know, like, the, the main thing that made me take away the alcohol was the gun, because I can't draw the gun. <laughs> and I'm not sure if you can tell that I can't draw guns. Yeah. Just take a lesson from Lot Rob Liefeld and keep adding random shit until you can't tell what the fuck you're drawing <laughs> right. anymore. Just draw a long <laughs> box, then some more long boxes on top of that box, and then some round cylinders on that box, and some more boxes on that box. It'll be fine. Nobody will cash in it. It'll be fine. Yeah. So I'm actually like, I actually kind of like by this point, Cable just having stupid sci-fi guns that make no sense. What bugs the shit out of me? What bugs the shit out of me is when they do it for Punisher or Red Hood, and it's like, what the fuck? Right. 
The best Punisher, the best way to do Punisher is just give him Vietnam guns. Absolutely. He never grew, he never moved on, even though modern Punisher was never even fucking in Vietnam. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> He's just really, really into that, that, that weaponry. Yeah. He's just specifically in America, boo, for that time period. Yeah. <laughs> Man, can I just go ahead and say one of the best fucking things that that uh, Punisher show did that we don't talk about enough is the reveal that Punisher's a huge fan of Earth, Wind, and Fire. I like it. Because I love... September. Yeah. I mean, I love Punisher. I really do. But I think one of the worst things about the way the character is handled is that a lot of people forget to make him human. Yes, and they just, I, they just, yeah, I they just make him kill man. Yeah. yeah, they just make him kill man, which, no, no, that's not interesting. Mm -hmm. Punisher is at his most interesting when he's almost kind of a representation of uh, the breaking of the psyche, you know? Right. He's just a sad, broken man. Right. All right. What were you even talking about? All right, Eddie, what else did you do this week? Yeah, the, the thing I wanted to point out, by the way, with, with the second second one, is notice how the the freaking the trash can is bent on the left side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's a straight line. <laughs> I was doing my best to draw a straight line there. <laughs> that, that's what came out. <laughs> It adds character. Yeah, it, it is an old trash can. Why wouldn't it be bent? Tommy I mean, Dreamer's probably like used it, a few times in ECW. It, it's fine for that. But at the same time, when you're trying to draw things that aren't supposed to be freaking bent and shit like that, it doesn't really look nice. <laughs> but that, that's right? the straightest line you can draw. <laughs> eh. Man, sometimes uh. when I make that eh noise, it sounds like fucking Voldemort laughing. Does he laugh? The one time in the uh, Deathly Hollows near the end, which uh, was a very strange line delivery by Ray Fiennes, and it be became a meme. Uh. It, it's the you may have heard it used as a sound effect in other like videos people make, where he goes, "Hey, eh, eh, eh. ah, I might." Oh man, uh, the YouTube video for it is. Uh, it, the popular YouTube video that I've seen for it is, uh, pardon my French here, but it's called Voldemort Laughs Like a Retard for 10 Hours. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. So, yeah, there... that's, that's memes for you. The memes. Oh, yeah. Was there at least, oh, a, yeah. what, what, was there at least, at least a freaking, uh, an accent on the E? Uh, no. Just straight. But that should have been. It would have been funnier. Hence why I said, pardon, why I said, pardon my French. All right. But yeah, so that, uh, what else did I do? Hmm, did I not draw anything else? I don't think I did, but whatever. I guess the last thing I did is, um, is just real life stuff. Weird stuff, I guess. I don't know what what to say, what to call it. But like, freaking, this is this was the say. Um, I had to go and help my mom with that concert I talked about last week. It didn't right. really work out. <laughs> As you'd imagine. Well, that's not good. Yeah. But uh, on the way we had to take a take a taxi because uh we were we were late because of reasons. And oh, no, wait, no, Man, we I hate reasons. We, we actually weren't late. No, I'm I'm misremembering. We, it was it was just that we don't have a car. And you can't like we had to bring our own sound equipment, which you can can can't really do with the, with the buses, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I took a taxi, and and, and the freaking the, the driver complimented my hair, which was the second time Orlando complimented my hair for some reason. <laughs> yeah. It it's weird, but I mean, hey, <laughs> I'd rather this than the other the opposite, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> The guy was like, are, are you in a band? Which, I mean, not yet, but hey, if I'm already looking the part, then maybe, <laughs> eventually. Right. Fake it till we make it, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
I mean, you know, like I do, I do the music stuff and stuff as a hobby, but like I do play, kind of plan, plan on becoming a one man band if I if it, if it is at all at all possible for me, which it may not be. But hey, hey, do not reference each later. <laughs> We're doing this messed up jet dance, you and me. I don't remember the last of the licks. We're, we're a three man band. Oh, we are. <laughs> I desperately hope that whatever blessing or curse there is upon them does not carry out to Heath Slater also getting the title, because holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, That'd be wild, but man. He, but if he, if he does, All then three he's, members of 3MB. But, like, imagine three, Heath Slater comes back ripped. Obviously on drugs. Like on steroids, I mean. <laughs> Just on steroids. That'd be I scary. I do not to want see. to imagine that. I do. Right? I, I want for this scary, scary body. I'm so later. used to looking at later. him like a complete and total goon. It'd be weird if he came out shredded. Man's already like 6'2. I mean, that's Jinder Mahal. That's what happened with him. Very true. Very true. He was uh, nothing impressive when he showed up. What, what even was Heath Slater's finisher? Um, uh, he had several, I think. Yeah. He, his initial one, which is the one he, I would want to say utilized the most throughout his career, was the, uh, what was it called? What do you call it? Sweetness, which was just a reverse sleeper slam, I want to say. Wow. Right, right. I do remember that. It was just like a lamer version of Dolph Ziggler's already lame finish. Yep, yep. And I want to say that's what he used throughout most of his career. But towards the end, before he got fired, I want to say he was doing like some sort of fireman's carry into a... Oh, what did he do? I think it was a powerbomb that he flipped it into. Nightmare to powerbomb. Right, kind of. I gotta be honest. Later. I don't recall him ever winning a match in the entirety of the three years I watched WWE, except maybe once with a roll-up. Right. All I remember is that is that after a while he he started doing doing a like a rolling rolling sleeper on the ground and they called it the Slater Gator. <laughs> yeah, I, hate it. I don't remember what he did after teaming with Rhino. To be honest, because I, I think the Slater Gator wasn't at the time of Rhino, and the Rhino left. No, no, that was that was way before Rhino. Oh, uh, Slater Gator would have been 2014, I want to say. So. That was around the time. It would have had to be around the time of Daniel Bryan's ascension to the main event, where he it was. Sound like he became a god. I don't know. Yeah, why I thought, yeah. I don't know why I thought you were going to say it. That was on the top of Daniel Bryan's assassination. <laughs> Bryan's assassination. <laughs> <It's> assassination. <laughs> the corporation didn't want him on top, and they didn't know. Uh, they didn't care how they were going to accomplish that. No, but wait, it, it, work, it works in lore, because he, he died and went to hell, which is where he started teaming with Kane, and then they came back. <laughs> oh, God. Team Hano was, was the highlight of Daniel Bryan's fucking career. That was my favorite period of his, that, easily. Probably my favorite I liked, of Kane's as well. I, I, liked, I liked Bryan Brian before he started actually getting close to the main event or whatever. And then, like, okay, I liked Brian before the yes gimmick, is I guess the best way to put it. I liked, liked Brian before he had a proper gimmick, and then he started doing the yes gimmick, and I disliked him. Then they started doing Team Hell No, and I liked Team Hell No. And then that split up, and I still started, started disliking Brian again. <laughs> right. I've always liked Brian, but I, me personally, I never felt he was top guy type of stuff, honestly. Hey, I, I, there's... There's a reason Ted and Muda have always said that he's better chasing the title than holding it. Yeah, yeah. Which is ironic because he uh, was always able to chase it and then get injured right after acquiring it. So maybe that was fate deciding, no, nope, we know what's best for you. God agrees. It sucks for him, yeah. It sucks for him, but that, that happened a lot. Yeah, Brian, Three Sean, Sean times, I want to say. His team boat. What about Steamboat? <laughs> Am I mixing up my, my classic wrestling? Wasn't it Steam, Steamboat that was better better chasing the titles usually? Yes, I just yeah. didn't hear your entire sentence. I only heard the Steamboat. I, 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 I said Daniel Bryan shall head tier 4 because Ricky Steamboat. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, honestly, yeah, apt comparison. I love Steamboat. 
Steamboat wasn't a great champion at any point in his career because they only gave him the title once, I want to say, maybe twice. And it didn't do a lot of good business, obviously. So he unfortunately never got again, which I love the guy, but sometimes them's the breaks, kid. Yeah. Them's the breaks. Eddie. I love Eddie. Freaking love Eddie, no matter what Wilde says. But yeah, he was another one of those guys. Great chaser. Got the title. Nobody seemed to care. Ratings plummeted to the lowest they had been ever, like at that point. Not quite to the degree of the mid-late 90s. But no, for, that, worst, for that era? For that era, yes. Yeah. The worst rated of all time until maybe Kofi was Kevin Nash. Right. But yeah, of that era, which had been in such a boom, because that's attitude leading into Ruthless, leading, unfortunately, into the 2007 era. Not, not, yeah. not great times for them, but yeah. Eddie's numbers were not great at all. Which, which is really sad, especially doubly so in hindsight. Yeah. At least he got one run in, you know? Yeah. We got to see it rather than just, like, pittering about, about like, man, could you imagine? Yep. Indeed. Because <laughs> there's so many cases we have that already with wrestlers, you know? Yeah. I mean, for, what if for a long time... What if champion? Oh, I love Test so much. I thought you said yeah, Chaz. Back to Daniel Bryan, though. For a long time, he was almost the greatest what if story in the history of what ifs ever because he got to the top of the mountain, had on his very next pay per view defense, had extreme rules against Kane. That's when he more or less broke his neck and had to retire. So if that was the end of Daniel Bryan's career, can you imagine how, how big of a what if that would be? Thankfully, it wasn't, but still. If, yeah. if that's where the book ends, like, oh my god, what? How could anyone be satisfied with that? That would that would have been terrible. I mean, imagine if Daniel Bryan's career, career ended when he choked at that guy in the, with the core. <laughs> oh man, that, that that's an interesting scenario indeed. Maybe he he would have been freaking Bray Wyatt instead. Of Husky Harris. Uh, well, not Husky Harris is fired, and I'm happy. What are oh, we talking about? Both of you talked over each other, so we, we couldn't understand anything. Yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. I didn't say anything particularly funny anyways. Right. Nor did I. I'm not agreeing with that you said nothing funny. I'm agreeing that I said nothing funny. Fuck you! <laughs> My joke was hilarious. God darn it. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Uh, this was the um, uh, freaking words. So, uh, doing this concert it was the first time that my old teachers saw my saw me now, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Like it's been it's been the first time that they've seen me since since I left the school, so they ha they haven't seen seen that I've dyed my hair and stuff like that yet. Uh huh. It was the the, the the um reactions were kind of funny because <laughs> um one of the one of the teachers there's a t teacher that I don't think can like I think most. Uh, of the other teachers don't don't like that teacher either, but she's kept around because she's the only only one who teaches those, those classes that she does. Uh more or less. <laughs> those are the worst kinds. Yeah. And she started mo mocking mocking my hair, which I didn't didn't particularly care about. But I think, oh freaking hell, gave me a sec to clear 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 thing, things on my end. <laughs> No problem. So yeah, um, she she was calling me names, names and shit, and she she's like, "No, he he's become a rich lizard," and my 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 first instinct was to turn turn around, and I was this fucking close to going, "No, I'm a wolf," <laughs> and that was so <laughs> funny to me. Like I wouldn't even get offended by any of any of the the other shit she, she said, or even that that thing in particular. I just found it funny that that that's my that's my freaking 
the, the, that's the thing thing that I need need to feel feel that, that I feel like I should turn around and freaking object to. <laughs> Uh, like ge- genuinely, if I if I don't notice that I'm about to say say those things, that moment that I do, that I would have said them, and it, it's so funny. <laughs> uh, also, my the the principal was like, "Oh well, you're, you're not a Eddie. Why are you, why do you have a mohawk? You're not a punk. You're you're like you're you're such a sweet kid. Why you're you're not that type of people. Your mother is though." So she she you, <laughs> she she probably forced it on you. Tell me that she forced it on you, and I went no. I wanted I wanted I wanted a mohawk since I've been little, dude. They're freaking rad, yo. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, it, it was it it was interactions. <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, it was funny. I'd I'd say, but I I, I call a lot of things funny. <laughs> <laughs> you keep using that word, but I don't think you know what it means. <laughs> you still not seen that movie? No, I haven't. I haven't. I I should have realized what I was setting up myself up for when I said it. <laughs> Next, you're going to start quoting Back to the Future. Uh, you must uh, uh, I uh, maybe I know one or two quotes. Shit. Uh, anyways, Eddie, what else? I think that's all I've done. All I've right. myself. Shit. Okay, so for my week, I actually don't remember a lot of what I've done. Uh, actually, I do recall two things. I'll just try and get over them quick. So, for one thing, uh, there's a mod I downloaded for Total War Medieval 2 a long fucking time ago called the Divide and Conquer mod. The Divide and Conquer mod is itself a mod of another mod, the Third Age mod. <laughs> The Third Age mod is one of the most iconic mods in gaming altogether. It is the one that turns Total War Medieval 2 into Total War Lord of the Rings. Uh, Ah, It's pretty cool. It's considered a classic. Done pretty well. Bounds pretty well. It's considered, you know, probably the best Total War mod of all time. Divide and Conquer is like, yo, that's cool, but I need more. So it does more. Third Age Total War... (laughs) Includes uh, mostly the stuff you associate with Lord of the Rings. We got Gondor, we got Rohan, we got Mordor, we got uh, fucking Isengard. Uh, Basically the core guys that you're used to from the movies. And Divide and Conquer splits up a couple of factions so that now they're separate. Like it used to be that uh, Bree and the Dunedain were mixed together into just Eriador and now they're separate. Or like now the province of Dol Amroth is set off from Gondor. So you know you're talking real nerd shit here. Oh, yeah, because I didn't understand a word of that. Yeah, absolutely fair. I didn't know it either until I downloaded... (laughs) I didn't know it either until I downloaded the fucking mod. And the real crazy thing is they actually tried to expand on some of Tolkien's own lore, which I can understand why some people wouldn't like that, but I'm fine with it. Taking the two locations of Inidwaith and Dorwinian that had pretty well no lore outside of... Inidwaith is a weird place of fish people. And uh, Dorwinian is... Uh, no, 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 don't get too excited. It's not people, who, it's not fish who are people, it's people who do a lot of fishing. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And Darwinian, it's a place where there's a lot of wine, and try to actually make this place as inter- interesting places. And it's pretty cool. I've downloaded it twice before. I get in, I look at all the stuff, and I'm like, man, that's cool, I should play this one day. And then I don't play it. So that's been happening for like a year, and uh, with no internet, I finally decided to play it. And I got six turns into a Darwinian campaign, and I was like, you know what, this is pretty cool. I don't know how economics work in this game yet at all, but it's pretty cool. Then the game fucking crashed between turns, and I was like, oh great, what the fuck. I assumed it must have been like I screwed up something during the install. And while I was bored, I was looking on uh, the mod page for the mod, and they've released a new version since I've lost internet. And part of the what it list says, okay, we haven't added anything like new features, but this is still a big update you should definitely download because it fixes lots of crashes, like how the game sometimes just randomly crashes between turns. Uh... And someone, yeah, and someone commented, uh, man, this update's great. I've gone 40 turns without crashing now. 
It's like, oh, I see. <laughs> no. That's so apparently what, apparently what it is, this isn't like, this actually isn't the developers just being incompetent. What it is, is part of the thing that comes packaged with the mod is a little thing you have to run that makes it where Medieval 2 can use up more than two gigabytes of processing power. Because Medieval 2 came out in 2006 or 2007, it's hard capped to only use two gigabytes of processing power. Modern computers have progressed a little bit past that. <laughs> so there's a mod to force Medieval 2 to do that so that the game engine can handle some of the more hardcore things the mod does, but it's still just like trying to jerry-rig the Medieval 2 engine into doing that. So for a long time, it just came with problems until they finally got where they could figure out a way to like, again, just jerry-rig the whole fucking engine to refix it. So that's what that does, apparently. But nonetheless, it's a cool mod. It does a lot of cool, wacky stuff. And I'll probably talk about it more in the future if I ever get around to playing it, though. I, I am trying to wait until I can get that fucking uh, update, because that's six gigabytes to fix that bug. Ooh. Oh. Well, actually, I don't know if it's six gigabytes. I think it may just be that they have it where you have to re-download the whole fucking mod every time you update. So, whoopoo, woo, yay. So, there's that. The other thing I do with my week is I played a lot of Team Fortress 2 on uh, offline. I actually just <laughs> remembered... To say, <laughs> wait a second there. Yeah, I don't have internet at the... W did things a bit 2003 and went to an internet cafe to play Team Fortress 2, on, 2 online. <laughs> yeah. While I was playing, they duct taped me to the ceiling. It was awesome. So... Playing Team Fortress 2 offline with bots, I gotta say, it's an experience. I've talked about it a little bit before, but uh, it's uh, what the most annoying thing at times. Because the AI, obviously, Team Fortress 2 is a game that's a lot about learning, and learning informal things and informal strategies that there's no way an AI is going to be taught. And there's some things that there's just no way. One of the most infuriating things, let me just put this in an Overwatch perspective, right? Right. So... Torbjorn, he's got a turret that's fairly strong, right? But it's not, like, super strong. Mm -hmm. In Team Fortress 2, the engineer is like Torbjorn, but just all around stronger. And the, sentry, the engineer's sentry gun is, like, crazy strong. It's about as tanky as the heavy, who is, for all intents and purposes, Reinhardt. So imagine if Torbjorn's sentry was as tanky as Reinhardt. And it also doles out pretty well more damage than any other... Uh, class in the game, anything short of getting backstabbed by the spy or headshotted by the sniper. Cool. So imagine that Torbjorn Sentry also does more damage than anything that isn't a Widowmaker headshot. That's a lot, yo. Yeah. So a lot of Team Fortress is paced around playing around the opposite team's engineer and having a good way to counter the enemy team's engineer. And the bots in Team Fortress 2 have no fucking clue how to play against engineers. <laughs> There'll just be a sentry set up in the most obvious place where the, everyone and their mother can shoot at it from the opposite side of the map, and it's outside their sentry gun's range. And they will just run up to it. That's the only that. time... Yeah, the only times I've seen the AI manage to beat a sentry nest in this game is if it's a fucking... Uh, Medic and heavy combo, where the medic pops his uber charge on the heavy, which makes the heavy invincible. So whoopee do, you lost the, you won the unlosable matchup. <laughs> so that's pretty infuriating, but it is nice that I get to dick around and just try goofy builds in Team Fortress Two that I would not try against actual people because I'd feel like my team's actually depending on me, right? Right. So, yeah, it's all very nice. Uh, it's also very strange. I can play with bots and I'll still unlock items. Weird. Oh. All right. So the other two things I did this week that occurred to me while I was talking about other things is we did a movie day, but we did it pretty late in the day. So we only got to watch two movies. The Big Lebowski and Fellowship of the Ring, both of which are movies I have watched before, but it was uh -huh. fun. So, watching The Big Lebowski again, for the first time as an adult, the only other time I've watched Big Lebowski, I was an uh, early teenager. That is a, uh, that I, it, it's a controversial movie, because part of the whole thing is that the plot seems to go nowhere. The plot does go places, just that mo the main characters don't give a shit about the plot. <laughs> well, that's not, that's not true. The dude starts to give a shit over the course of the movie. 
I don't want to go too far into detail, but it's a really fun like movie where it's a uh, it's kind of a noir like comedy. But like it's missing a lot of the typical noir elements like no one gets shot and no one like only one person dies and it's probably not the character you're expecting to die. But a lot of the fun is from the fact that it's a noir, but the hero in this case is a dumbass stoner who for the entire first half of the movie doesn't even care about what's happening because he thinks it's all made up. And yeah. his two his two friends, one of whom is a fucking psychotic uh, Vietnam veteran who thinks everything is related to Vietnam, and a very quiet, very milk toast kind of guy who just doesn't say anything except like when he speaks up, the Vietnam veteran tells him, "Shut the fuck up, Tony. You're out of your element." <laughs> So The Big Lebowski is uh, directed and I believe also written by the Coen brothers. So you've got a lot of their signature dialogue going on here that's very, very precise. And there's a lot of good dialogue humor in there. There's also, it's a comedy made before the cavalcade of stoner comedies. So right. it's, actually, it's actually funny. But also, Unbelievable. But also, like stoner comedies nowadays, they'll make a joke and they hang on that joke for fucking five hours. Like, you guys know that shit they do in comedies now, right? Yep. Are Stormer like comedies that? still being made? Of course. Why? Now, you either have stoner comedies or you got Adam Sandler. That's your only two choices. <laughs> I, I honestly thought stoner comedies died, died, in, died in, like, the late mid, mid, in the late 2000s. No, Seth Rogen and James Franco are still going. I don't know huh. if they've been doing anything for the past two years, but that's because nobody's been doing anything for the past two years. Yeah. Very true. Like most of most of the com comedy stuff that I've seen were just like rom coms since since the late two thousands. And by seen, I don't mean I've oh, watched. Yeah. I mean like I've I, that's what my family would family have been watching. Yeah, that's always gonna be there. Yeah, shit. But yeah, Big Lebowski being a decent comedy is actually features a lot of jokes, and it does not hang on a fucking joke for an hour. Some jokes get repeated, but it's usually pretty quick and you don't notice unless you're paying attention. And this movie is considered a cult classic for a pretty good reason. It features a lot of very uh, good, very quotable dialogue, and you will hear people referencing it pretty well constantly. Because, I mean, neither of you have watched Big Lebowski, right? Correct. But you have certainly seen plenty of GIFs and images of it, haven't you? Correct. Yeah. And um, I gotta say, but yeah, but go ahead. I was going to say, like, like the things I've seen that I, I think are from that are like the freaking the temple, in, the temple in scene, the temple in a teacup or whatever. Or am I mixing what? them up? No, it, no, You're in that, in that one, up. yeah, in that one, it's the, it's the, the landlord dan dancing, I think, isn't it? Landlord dancing. It's something like that. It's, it's like, it's like this. They're, they're ripping, ripping on like modern art or whatever, or, or like yeah, it's just, they're, they're ripping on arty, arty, farty bullshit, and it, it's done by like the landlord or landlord or so, someone like that who's oh. supposed to be this serious character, freaking dancing around in, in like a on a, a nude suit and also a toga or something like that. Yes, uh, at one point they do attend uh, the dance. the dance show for uh, the dude's landlord, and it's very. Very, uh, yeah, yeah, the joke is having a guy who obviously can't dance, dance on stage in a very, it's in, like interpretive dance and he's a one man dance show. So it's just really pathetic, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's pretty well the joke. And there's a good mixture of humor because it's not all pathetic jokes. It's not all cringe humor. There's a good mixture of just like quick, simple, clever humor. There's bizarre, absurd moments. There's black comedy. There's a good, solid mix of comedies here, and I think there's something that everyone can laugh at. My personal favorite joke in the whole movie is a very simple one, where the dude is at a sheriff's office, and he says something that pisses the sheriff off, and the sheriff just calmly sits there for a second, and then fucking chucks his coffee mug directly at the dude's forehead, and like, the most, like, bizarre way I've ever seen someone chuck a coffee mug. He, like, just pushes his hand forward and then lets go of it. <laughs> And it just dinks off the dude's forehead, and the dude just puts his face in his hands and goes, Are you fucking fascist? 
I mean, I, I feel like I feel like I've uh, like I feel like that that scene would have been funnier if the dude just no sold it. That's oh, just normal. No, no, you haven't heard the the noise the dude makes. It's what really sells it. Oh, uh, that's a good one. But yeah, it's a, it's a very fun uh, comedy, and watching it again as an adult and paying more attention, I there is a lot of charm to the way the mo the story gets told. Because I think like one of the greatest gags of the movie is that like at the start of the movie, the dude doesn't even care about the mystery because he thinks it's all rigged. And the longer the movie goes on, the more convinced he becomes that it wasn't rigged, and there's an actual like lives are actually at stake here. And he starts to give more of a shit and actually try and figure out the mystery. But the more interested the dude gets, the more the mystery just falls apart and stops making sense and just, like, he keeps getting even weirder and weirder. And I, there's one very specific scene, one moment in one scene that I'm particularly fond of for just, like, pretty well flipping the dude off for caring, which I just find very funny. Like, now that you're actually paying attention, no this shit makes sense. What the fuck? I like it. I like it a lot. The other movie was Fellowship of the Ring! Standard edition. Oh, no. So it's yeah. It's like 2,500 minutes short of that way, right? Yes. Pretty well. So, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't... I knew that I had seen at least the extended cut of Return of the King at some point in my life, but as we were watching that movie, it occurred to me... Oh, shit. I grew up on the extended cuts of Lord of the Rings trilogy. There's some important shit that's missing from these movies. But I'm just like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I don't think it'll ever be more egregious than them cutting out Saruman's, the end of the Saruman storyline entirely. Right. Because that, sh that shit's egregious. Like, the, the guy who's the main fucking villain of the first two movies, we don't find out what happens to him. It it's just, he's gone from the plot for some reason. But, like, the one that really confounds me... So, like, the big storyline with Gimli, right? Gimli and Legolas, is that they're both racist assholes who, over the course of the story, learn to be less racist and become best friends, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I, the big moment that, like, starts Gimli's side of the arc and makes Gimli start to be less racist against elves is when they go to uh, Lothlorien, the southern wood elf realm. And they meet Galadriel, the uh, crazy elf queen, which kind of whatever she is. And Gimli, like, just falls head over heels for her. And she's, like, so charmed by Gimli. Like, she, almost kind of a mix of charm and pity for Gimli that she gives him a lock of her hair, which is the only time she's ever done that. And Gimli treasures it as a prized possession. And it's the distinctive moment where Gimli, like, realizes that he actually does give shit about at least one elf. Maybe they're not all so bad. Yeah, all that shit ain't in the uh, standard theatrical cut. The start of one of the main characters' fucking arc, their character arc, just isn't there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's... <laughs> well, that's an interesting choice. Yeah. You so think it's just no matter least... what cut you're watching, it's going to have the important elements to it. Yeah. I guess not. It, it's it, it's part of the trouble of like adapting a fucking 1,200 page or whatever series of novels to three movies. Right. And I think that they had to fucking cram to get to like the two hours that Fellowship already is. And the extended cut is like, what, four or five? <laughs> it gets more ridiculous with every movie I know because the Return of the King like is notorious in its extended cut because the fucking ending just goes on and on and on but yeah it's uh, it's pretty egregious I uh I definitely want to it's like the trouble is I think the extended cuts like cost way more than the theatrical cuts to buy that bugs the shit out of me because I think that's why I wound up getting the the theatrical cut instead of the extended cut. And now that I've seen the theatrical cut, I'm like, fuck, I guess I need to get the extended cuts. Oh, man. Uh, other than that, anything that I can particularly recall, uh, it's a lot of fun watching Fellowship again, because, I, I mean, the Lord of the Ring trilogy is just a bunch of good fucking movies. Oh, yeah. 
But it's fun watching again, seeing some like you can tell like they hired Peter Jackson and Peter Jackson. Like it was the same thing around the same time, really, of Peter Jackson and Sam Raimi going from doing like kitschy B horror stuff to getting brought on to direct massive movie trilogies, right? Right. And with Sam Raimi, like, he just straight up shoots the entirety of the Spider-Man movies like they're Evil Dead. Like, if, Hank, if you were to go back and watch Evil Dead 2, you'd be like, holy shit, this is shot, shot just like Spider-Man. Yeah. Like, with the goofy camera zooms and everything. <laughs> And Peter Jackson very clearly uh, pulled back a lot more, but there are a couple times you can see that, like, Evil Dead goofy camera shot zoom in on someone. It's just like, it kind of takes you out a little bit because you're like, oh, okay, groovy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one last thing I wanted to say that I just did not remember. I did not remember that at one point when uh, the ring wraiths are chasing Arwen as she's carrying Frodo back to the elves, one of the ring wraiths talks to her at the river crossing and says, give us the hobbit and we'll let you live. And it's like, what the fuck? First of all, they didn't need to talk. Second of all, why do they have that voice? I didn't think they'd negotiate. No, yeah, I didn't think so either. That's the only time you ever hear a ring wraith talk in the first two movies. <laughs> like, the Witch King talks in Return of the King, but I think he's got an actual good voice there. It's something like, no man can kill me, and then, you know, I'm not a man! Pfft, dead. <laughs> Which, you didn't watch Return of the King, right? Correct. That's the one I've not seen. Man, you need to get on that. Indeed I do. I, I gotta watch Princess Bride and uh, Back to the Future. You gotta watch Lord of the Rings. The running time should be the same, more or less. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that depends. Am I watching all three Back to the Futures? Well, you'd still be pretty close to the normal running time anyway. <laughs> yeah. If you watch the extended cut, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd finish all the movies and I'd get back to you like, all right, Pink, what do you think? And, and you'd be like, shut up. They're still like still sieging fucking Osgiliath. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's been going on for a while now it's just getting good we're making a lot of uh, progress um, here probably just showed up <laughs> what? that's my point he's been, he's been there for like two movies but he just shows up for some reason he does the, the fucking hour. he does the Jesus Christ intro from Fight of Gods yeah, I'm, I'm back, back for, for the people, people. I, I love that. I love that line delivery. I'm back for the people. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, man, that's part of what I love about Fight of the Gods. It's not only like the low budget and the bizarro voice acting, but just like, why would Jesus Christ come back now to get into a fist fight with Zeus? I don't know. I, I can't really comment. I'm, 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 all the sinners and all that. It's time for fist fights with Zeus. <laughs> I can't really co comment on that 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 topic because the, the idea of Boromir legitimately just randomly showing up as Boromir the White during the final conclusion to Lord of the Rings is funny. That's 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 the alternate timeline where Denethor succeeds in burning Faramir on the pyre. <laughs> Yeah, like Gandalf get like Gandalf doesn't make it in time to save Faramir, and then you just see Boromir in the distance, and Denethor like starts screaming in his usual Denethor voice. He is risen, and then he jumps off the top of the tower anyways because he's Denethor. <laughs> Man, that's a, uh, it. May be grim to say so, but that's the funniest fucking moment in the entirety of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Denethor lighting himself on fire and jumping off the tower. <laughs> It's like, how egregious of a way do you need to kill a guy than lighting him on fire and dropping him off a tower that has to be, like, fucking six miles high? <laughs> that might be a little bit of overkill. Yeah. Just, just uh, a bit. The really great thing is he's dropping off the tower into the city, so some dude is just walking along and he sees the regent on fire fall on the middle of the street. <laughs> Yeah, 
All right, so that was my week. I believe we could call it a podcast. Ready? Me? Yes, you. Me. Yes. Me. Mm. I'm gonna get a fucking hernia. <laughs> Those aren't good. No. My God, is this still running? Never gonna stop. It's like the Rob Zombie song. Yeah. Edge came back <laughs> to the brew theme. When is he gonna bring that one back? What, when's he gonna bring what back? Rob Zombie. When's he gonna be, bring the Rob Zombie song back? Oh, the d- d- Angle 95? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That song's actually great. Shut up. It is. It is. I just, I, I just like the delivery of the, of that of the of the first line in the in that one when it, when it, when Edge used it as it as it as, it, as, it, as his team. Yeah, it's my Durango number ninety five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the only Rob Zombie song that qualifies as groovy. <laughs> I love Rob Zombie. I wish he made music again. <laughs> no, he's, he's, too, he's too busy rebooting Halloween. Well, now he's rebooting Thank the monsters. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, my parents are both like huge monsters fans because they grew up on it. So, yeah, imagine their reaction when I told them that he was taking it over. Boy. <laughs> Those poor souls. But all, all is forgi- forgiven if he if he don't, if he makes the main theme of the movie the, a cover of the Monster Mesh. <laughs> no, it isn't. If they use anything other than Dragula, then that's just not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> now, imagining uh, imagining a Beta Switch intro when it start, starts as Dragula and then it transitions into the Monster Mesh. Uh, that would be pretty wild, man. Yeah. Uh, all right, bye. <laughs>